Hey, you. Uh, hey. Oh, man. Oh, God, this is so comfy. I'm just gonna lie here and suffocate on my own vomit now. I, uh, I had a thing I wanted to tell you. Uh-huh. This room sure looks different when it's spinning. So I was browsing through the used book ads in the paper when I... Listen, Eileen, I'm totally excited about books right now, but... Wait, hear me out! So... I noticed this article about a war veteran from Conwell Springs who just died. I remembered that you used to live there and everything, and... Oh, how I wish for joyful, blissful sleep. A and get this! His name was Joseph. Joseph Rain. What did you just say? You knew him, right? I knew it! I knew you'd know him! Yeah, he is was my grandfather. Hey, wait a minute. I never told you where I grew up. Oh, well, I, uh, well, I might have sort of looked you up. That is not cool, Eileen. Seriously. I just couldn't help myself. Well, one of these days you're gonna help yourself to a restraining order. I'm just telling you this as a friend. I know. Well, anyway, you should know that the funeral is tomorrow. Okay. Are you gonna go? I don't know. Good night, Eileen. <sighs> Good night, Kathy. Oh, God, make it stop. Looks like Eileen left a note for me here. Hi, Kat. Since it's such a long drive, I set the alarm so you won't miss the funeral. Thank me later. E. I'm so getting a new roommate. Well, I guess I should get going. I'm late enough as it is. <sighs> Honestly, she can believe in what she wants as long as she doesn't try to shove it down my throat. That movie's not out yet. It's a promo poster Eileen got for being an extra. She tells everyone who walks in here the same joke. Spoiler alert, the boat sinks. I'm fairly sure it's about some guy who falls in love with his golden retriever. I think that movie is about a girl and a boy who hate each other at first, and then they fall in love for no reason at all. Oh, wait. <laughs> That's every romantic comedy ever. Eileen's girly suitcase. There's a sticker on it with her full name. Eileen Mildred Summers. Mildred. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna get her for that. I wish I could wrap up that fact and save it for Christmas. The Thing. One of my favorite horror movies. Pulp Fiction. Love that flick. Just some random band poster. Nah, it's no fun when there's no one around to annoy with it. smoke. Does anyone object? Guess not. Dead people rule. We are gathered here today to honor a person of great integrity. 
a pillar of the community, and a decorated war hero. His name was Joseph Irving Rain. We all remember his warm heart, his compassion, and his eagerness to help others. His passing while our loss is surely heaven's gain. Now we entrust our brother Joseph to God's mercy. We commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our frail bodies so they may be conformed to his glorious body, who died, was buried, and rose again for us. To him be glory forever. Amen. Oh, Kathy, you big baby, just talk to her. Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Rain? Have we met, Anna? You look strangely familiar. It's me. It's Catherine. Catherine who? You don't recognize me? I guess it's been a while. I might be a bit taller than you remember me. Kathy? Bless my soul. Look at you all grown up. Oh, how I wish Joseph could see you now finally coming home. Let's hope he can, wherever he is. A comforting thought, dear. Lord, how long has it been? Ten years? Fifteen? Fifteen sounds about right. I was six when Mom took me away. Goodness. We have some catching up to do, then. <laughs> I want to know everything. Listen, I'm not quite ready to leave yet, but why don't you join me at the house in half an hour? Sure, I'd love to. I passed it on my way here. It shouldn't be too hard to find. I'll see you soon, then. I'm so glad you found your way back home. I can't wait for us to have a chance to talk. Same here. See you in a bit. No reason to go in. I'm sorry for your loss. Thanks. If you wish to find God, the Church of the Holy Trinity is always open to you. Is that so? Here, have a brochure. It's never too late to turn away from the path of sin. And what makes you so sure I'm on a sinful path, Father? Wouldn't you say that prejudice is but a small step from the seven big ones? I simply meant that we are all sinful creatures, child. I hope to see you at the church. Don't get your hopes up, buddy. I'll pray for you. I wish you comfort in this time of grief. Grandma, anybody home? Oh, hello, dear. I was just wondering what took you so long. Sorry, I couldn't resist taking that old wheelchair for a spin. Oh, don't give me that look. I put it back. You haven't changed one bit. Always kidding around, just like when you were little. Come have a seat. We have so much to talk about. So, now, tell me about your life in the city. Oh, there's not much to tell. I'm going to school for journalism. It's my second year. I ride a motorcycle in case you missed it there out front. Ah, oh, that's right. Just like your father. Yeah, I suppose. I must ask, have you heard anything from your father? Anything at all? No, nothing since he bailed way back then. I expected as much. He disappeared without a trace. No matter, that's ancient history. How Sharon then? Mom is... 
I had her committed to a place where she could get some real help. I just couldn't take it anymore. I'm sorry to hear that. In spite of everything that happened when she took you away. Yeah, about that. I'm sorry I didn't visit sooner, Grandma. Mom, she told me all these horrible lies about you and Grandpa. When I was old enough to understand what she was doing, I felt like it was much too late. It wasn't your fault, dear. You were a child. I'm just happy that you're here now. Me too. So, what about you? How have you been doing all these years? I've been lonely ever since the accident. There's no denying that. What accident? Goodness gracious. Of course you don't know. She took you away before it all happened. Don't know what? I will never forget that dreadful day. August 16th, 1981. It was the middle of the night when Sheriff Truman knocked on our door. He had Joseph with him. I couldn't even recognize Joseph at first. All dirty and wet with an awful blank stare on his face. Since that day, he never spoke a word. Forever confined to that blasted wheelchair. Really? For all this time? I had no idea. It came as a shock to all of us. That's horrible, Grandma. I'm so sorry. Thank you, dear. Why do you think Grandpa suddenly left that night in 81? I haven't the faintest idea. He acted very peculiar not long before it happened, disappearing for hours at a time. At first, I even suspected he was having an affair. When I asked him about it, he just said he was chasing old demons. It must have had something to do with the war. Maybe it was post-traumatic stress disorder? Grandpa always had a hard time showing weakness. I don't know, dear. I, I'm just speculating. I didn't think too much of it at the time. Joseph was a man of few words. I'm sure he just didn't wish to burden me with it, whatever it was. What did the doctors have to say about Grandpa's condition? Persistent vegetative state. That's what they call it. I've heard it all by now. One doctor said it was a stroke. Another claimed it was a seizure. It's all a load of tripe. I had an MRI performed on Joseph. Yeah, I've heard of them. Yes, well, according to the scan, his brain was completely intact. They thought it was a technical problem at the time, some kind of glitch. But the result was the same after three different scans on three different machines. Eventually, they had to confess that they simply had no credible explanation for the state he was in. Hmm. Then this injury just happened to occur on the very same night he mysteriously disappears? Indeed. What did Sheriff Truman have to say about the matter? <sighs> Not much. He said they simply found Joseph in that condition on the outskirts of town. The sheriff was convinced there was some kind of foul play involved, but the investigation turned up nothing. He later said that he was sorry, but that he was forced to close the case. You know, I could try to find out more about this. You're welcome to try, dear. Some kind of closure would mean the world to me. Okay, I think I'll head over to the sheriff's station for a little chat then. Would be nice to witness police doing some actual police service for once. Sure, you go ahead. Let me know if I can be of any more help. See you later, Grams. Take care, dear. Z500 cell. You have a sick mind, you know that? I don't want to show her that.
Hi. Hello. Do I have to commit a crime to get your attention? Because I seriously will. Ma'am, I'm really quite busy at the moment. Hey, wait. I know you. I'm pretty sure you don't. Yes, I do. You're Kathy. Kathy Rain. My reputation precedes me in a kind of but not totally creepy way. Aw, oh, come on. It's me, Lenny. Lenny Marks. I'm drawing a blank. Really? You don't remember us playing when we were little kids? Not really. Sorry, buddy. Darn. Well, that's a bummer. Anyway, what can I do for you today? I wanted to ask if you know anything about my grandfather's accident. I really don't know much beyond the rumors. The sheriff may have more information, but even he probably doesn't know anything that isn't in the report. It happened before either of us worked here. Okay, I think I'll have a chat with the sheriff then. Sure thing. His office is to your right. Well, gotta go. See ya. Hey, Sheriff. What's the deal with that bum? What bum? The one in the cell. Oh, I thought it was with you. Well, shit. Hello, Sheriff. Do you have a moment? Not really. Make it quick. Do you know what happened to Joseph Rain in 81? He had a stroke in the woods. That's what happened. If that's all there is, why would Sheriff Truman open an investigation? It was just standard procedure. A general occurrence report always has to be filed. I see. Did you know him at all? No, I haven't been in town for long. Man sure has one hell of a reputation, though. It's been over a decade since he was put in that wheelchair, and people still talk about the man he used to be. It's like he was a cult leader or something. Sounds like a conspiracy theory to me. Could be, but you know what they say. Things too good to be true usually are. Could I have a look at that report? Absolutely not. They're official police documents. Why not? I thought filed police reports are public record. Not in this state, they ain't. But I'm family. Doesn't that count for something? You consider yourself family? I've never even seen you before in this town. It's complicated. Guess what's complicated? Not to mention illegal. Handing out evidence to anyone who asks for it. Lenny, a little help here? Don't you agree that he's taking by the book too far? Well, uh, boss, she is his granddaughter, really. I don't think it's any... Don't you think I know that? There are rules. Am I the only one in here who cares about the law? Too much coffee? Try not to pop a vein. You want to see the inside of a cell? Oh, cuff me, officer. Spare me the... Uh, just follow the rules like everyone else. I've had enough of this nonsense. Fine. Okay, I guess. Maybe halfway through. Hey. What? I can't hear you! Thanks! That was getting annoying. Hey. Hi there! So, why'd they put you in that cell? Uh, well, uh, it, it's all just a big misunderstanding. Is that so? Yeah, I, I didn't mean to steal anything. I was just using my pockets to move the beer to the checkout. That's the worst excuse I have ever heard. For your information, I happen to have a deadly fear of shopping carts. I take my last statement back. This excuse is even worse. Hey, it wasn't your father who was killed by a shopping cart when you were eight. Uh, I sure hope not. To be fair, mine wasn't either. It was just Uncle Bob. But that doesn't mean it was any less traumatic, mind you. To this day, I still get nervous breakdowns at grocery stores. I think I've heard enough, buddy. You're right. We should stop before the flashbacks begin. You need to keep the blonde cop out there busy for a while. I do? 
Ten bucks says you do. Hmm. I'd say my services in this matter are worth at least twenty bucks. Nine. Fifteen. Eight. Fine. Ten. Seven. <sighs> Deal. Good. So, uh, what am I doing again? Distract that young cop in the lobby. I don't care how you do it, as long as you keep him occupied for a while. Okay, then. Let me know when. Will do. Hey, the jail is off limits. You shouldn't be in there. Oh, sorry. I, I just heard someone yelling. Uh, I think that guy in the cell needs some help. Ah, <sighs> oh, what now? Okay, I have to make this quick. I see a bunch of keys to the evidence lockers. I could take one, but I need to know what I'm looking for first. Okay, let's have a look. Hmm, I'm gonna have to get my hands on that recorder. Okay, let's find the key to locker number five. Got it. Lanny, I need you to do something. How can I help, boss? It's my mother's birthday this weekend. You'll have to get her in. All right, got it. Note to self, remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue violet, and two yellow tulips. I've been working on my research in the attic at night. I just don't want her to worry. She has enough to think about with everything that's been going on lately with Sharon and Kathy. Anyway, I'm getting closer to finding the source. I have a theory, but I need help. I'm gonna have to involve somebody else. Hey, Lenny. Hello, Kathy. What's up? Nah, I don't want to ask him about that. Sure, I'll show him the police report I stole from under his nose. I don't want to show him that. Well, gotta go. See ya. Hey, uh, Kathy, wait. What? Do you eat foot? I, I mean, food? Absolutely not. I feed on human misery. I, uh... Relax, Lenny. Yes, I do eat food. Oh, well, great. Can I buy you food sometime? And also buy food for me? And, and then maybe we can eat the food together? I'm really busy right now. Maybe later. Oh, okay. See ya. Oh, 
Oh, hello, dear. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's up? Would you mind if I took a look in the attic? I suppose it would do no harm. Come with me. Thanks, Grandma. You're welcome, dear. Be careful now. The bulb looks burned out. I'll have to replace it. Nothing. The... Nothing. It was a joke, you know. I wonder why Grandpa ended up in that thing. Free light bulb? Score! There we go. typewriter covered in cobwebs. Mr. Bear! Oh, how did you get all the way up there? Good idea. You just keep watch. Let's see what's in here. There were two pictures, a newspaper clipping, a key, and a tape inside. Looks overexposed. I can't make much out. I think I see trees in the background, but most of the picture is just bright white. Grandpa in uniform with two other men. Something is handwritten on the back. Flight training, McConnell Air Force Base, 1941. <laughs> Tragic drowning in Conwell Springs. In early morning on Sunday the 14th, a teenage girl found dead near Conwell Lake. The girl is survived by her mother, father, and younger brother. The funeral service will be held at Conwell Cemetery on the 21st of July. The notice is dated July 15th, 1975. Tragic story. I wonder why Grandpa saved this. 
It's a small key, fairly modern design. You've reached the rain residence. Leave a message after the beep. Hello, Joseph, Mrs. Rain. It's me, Charles. I thought I'd give you a call. Erica just had her firstborn. It's a boy. Thankfully, he looks nothing like his father. Uh, listen, I was thinking maybe you'd like to come and visit. And what about your little Kathy? Maybe she wants to see the baby. Well, anyways, I hope to see you soon. All the best. Bye. You people make me sick. We're never coming back. Don't call, don't write. If you ever try to contact us, I will call the police. Joseph, you there? It's me, Cocky. I, it happened to me too. And I'm not going to tell any of those bastards. They got it all wrong. You're the only one I trust now. Just call me back as soon as you can. Hmm.